So, a little introduction to Nyquist criterion, uh, which is at a really high level, and you can see at a high level it's not too bad conceptually. There's not a lot here that is scary, but the details are a little bit of work to go through. So consider a feedback control system. Let g of s be the forward loop transfer function and h of s be the feedback transfer function. Um, the Nyquist plot is a parametric plot of the frequency response function if you combine those two, g, h, together, um, which is the open loop transfer function with j omega substituted in for s. So, it's really not uh, conceptually that tricky, the Nyquist plot. Um, it's it's uh, actually very analogous, um, well, so the Nyquist criterion, which is something that we'll, we'll talk about more, uh, allows us to gain insight about closed loop stability from the open loop frequency response. So open loop frequency response function is g h j omega. Um, so we can draw the Nyquist and Bode plots of the open loop frequency response, g and h, and learn things about the closed loop frequency response, the closed loop stability. And also, uh, we can gain insight into transient response and steady state error response characteristics from the Nyquist plots as well. So just like root locus, we plotted open loop poles, right? And then we drew lines to, to the open loop zeros. And we said, oh, yeah, that's our, that's our root locus. That's where the closed loop poles are going to be. Uh, we found out things from the open loop system about the closed loop system. And that's what we're going to try to learn in the Nyquist plot as well, is stuff about the closed loop system from the open loop system. Yeah? I'm a little confused why the open loop is g times h. I thought ah. it's just supposed to be g. So good question. The <coughs> control loop we're looking at is in the forward path we have G in the return path we have H and the close or the open loop transfer function so G is called the forward path transfer function. H is called the, the feedback transfer function or the return path transfer function. And GH is called the open loop transfer function. Uh, when H is 1, then it's just G. But it is... It is uh, slightly different than so remember when we do the closed loop we get uh, GH over 1 plus GH right or no G over 1 plus GH I think yeah and there's, there's a K yeah. so that's that's what our closed loop is our open loop is just the GH and Finding out what the, well, we're going to go into an extended argument about the poles of the open loop and how they're related to the poles of the closed loop and the zeros. It's, it's, there's a long discussion that we'll have about that, but they're related and suffice it to say that we're going to learn stuff about the closed loop from this open loop stuff, the GH stuff. Um, yeah. So. Uh, and we're also going to be able to learn stuff about the transient state state response characteristics of the closed loop system, which, once again, is stuff we learned from the root locus, right? 
and, and you could just think of this as being like Spanish versus French. I mean, it's like two different ways of looking at feedback control and they're equivalent in a lot of senses. Um, I think root locus is uh, a little bit easier conceptually to work with. The frequency response stuff is a little bit more challenging to get a good feel for it, I would say. I think the root locus is, the reason why, so root locus actually came later than this stuff, the Nyquist stuff, but we're teaching the Nyquist stuff second, I think, because the root locus stuff's a little easier to grasp the first time. This stuff is like, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. Um, but it is really cool and I think it's really elegant and it's useful, so. All right, so a description of the Nyquist criterion is what we'll start with. A rigorous derivation of the Nyquist criterion is beyond the scope of, of what we're doing in class. Um, there's a, there are proof, or there are thorough uh, derivations. I don't think that the textbook has a thorough, um, niece. I don't think it has a thorough derivation of it. I could be wrong, but as I recall, they don't either. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty long, um, but it's worth going through if you have the time. However, a motivating description is included, so I'm going to try to describe to you how it works, why it works, and not just give you some rules to follow by rote. I dislike doing that, even though I end up doing that because we have time constraints. So. Uh, the full Nyquist plot. I have a fonts problem I need to fix. I haven't got around to it yet. But, um, so that's why we get this. So on your sheet, you should see the full Nyquist plot is the mapping of a contour. And this is just gamma n. That's what we're going to call this contour. Um, that contains, uh, oh, oh, yes. Before we begin, please review the complex functions as described in lecture A1. So I'm going to skip, switch over to lecture A1 and, and go through that, and then we'll come back to this and continue because I feel that it's uh, worth doing. I think maybe we have all seen this stuff at some point, but it's hard to remember it. So I'm going to do that review. <coughs> 